Amazon definitely won't be happy that I'm making this video, but I think it's an important topic to talk about. I've been seeing more and more people jailbreak their Kindles, and I really wanted to see for myself what the hype was all about. If you haven't heard of jailbreaking before, that's totally okay. Basically, it's another way of saying of hacking into the Kindle software and being able to do things that you normally wouldn't be able to do, things that Amazon probably does not want you doing on your Kindle. In today's video, I'll be showing you some of the benefits of jailbreaking and why people are doing it in the first place, but I'll also be talking about the process it takes to get there and some of the risks involved that people aren't really talking about either. Let's dive in. So before I tell you about all of the bad and negative stuff of jailbreaking, and trust me, there's quite a bit of that, I want to talk about and tell you all the fun stuff that's involved with jailbreaking your Kindle. Specifically, I want to answer the question of what is the point of jailbreaking your Kindle? It doesn't really improve the experience for the average bookworm that likes to read books. The way I see it, there are three primary reasons why somebody would want to jailbreak their Kindle. There's more visual control, there's more fun modifications you can do, and of course, there's actual EPUB support. Now, the most popular reason why I see people jailbreak their Kindles is for the more visual control. Having more available font settings and options and the way you can customize the experience, the way things look when you read a book. For example, on a jailbroken Kindle, you can do things like extend the margins across the entire width of the screen. You also have much more granular control over the font size and spacing. All of this is not available on the normal Amazon software. You also have some more fun options like being able to switch to a continuous scroll mode and to swipe up and down instead of going left and right like new pages. This is actually an option available on the Kindle app, but still not available on the Kindle e-reader yet with the normal software. And I also love this ability to add a progress bar to the bottom of your Kindle to see how far you are into the book. For some people, these small little extra features make a huge difference in the reading experience, especially if you're visually impaired or have special settings that you need, having these extra granule controls make a huge difference for you. And I'm honestly surprised that Amazon has not offered these features natively yet. They are not far-fetched features whatsoever. They're just additional controls for more people to use. And I think that's a really big benefit for people on their Kindle. The second most popular benefit that I see of jailbreaking your Kindle are fun modifications you can add to make your Kindle stand out from the crowd. By far, my favorite modification are these custom screensavers. I've been seeing them all over Reddit lately. Once you jailbreak your Kindle, you can add these custom transparent screensavers on top of your screen. They just look so cool and fun and different than the other Kindle screensavers that come with the device. And I love the fact that you can just make your own as many as you want and upload them to a folder and have them randomly cycle through them each time you put your Kindle to sleep. I found a folder on Reddit. Someone shared a library that they made. So you can find these online as well. Another modification that I find really helpful is the ability to have reading statistics directly on the device. I've been begging Amazon to add this feature for so long now. I love being able to track how long I'm reading for and all my numbers and stats. I think it's a great way to gamify the process of reading and I'm really surprised Amazon still hasn't added this yet to their Kindle e-reader. And of course, if you do jailbreak your Kindle, there are other modifications you can install. I've seen some fun ones like downloading a notepad application or even web browsers that are more advanced. The possibilities are endless when it comes to apps. Now the last but certainly not least benefit of jailbreaking your Kindle is having actual and native EPUB support. You see, the way it works, if you have a Kindle, you have to buy your books directly through Amazon. And when you download them to your Kindle, they come in a very specific format that is only going to work on a Kindle. But let's say, for example, that you already have a library of book files on your computer that you got elsewhere and you want to have those on your Kindle. You can't simply drag and drop them onto your Kindle by plugging it in. That won't work. You have to use the send to Kindle feature, which is something that will actually convert your book files into the Amazon format, which again only works on Kindle. When you jailbreak your Kindle, you actually gain the ability to simply drag and drop a whole folder of EPUBs directly onto your Kindle disk, and you can see all those EPUBs show up on the Kindle and read them without any problem. They just work, there's no conversion involved. This is a huge benefit for people who like to manage their own library of books, especially if you wanna be platform agnostic and not be locked into the Amazon ecosystem. This is a very essential feature to have, especially if you have your own library of books already. Being able to manage those directly on a Kindle without converting anything is a really big benefit. Now, before telling you about the dark side of jailbreaking your Kindle, I do wanna do a very quick shout out for my book club, Presently Reading. Every month, I pick a new nonfiction book with 2,000 plus other bookworms from around the world and read it together. Then every week I send out a quick email with my thoughts on the book so far and a lesson that I've learned. And we have a quick discussion about the book as of that week. It's been a really great way to be accountable to read a new book every single month and get some nonfiction reading in. If that sounds interesting to you, the book club is completely free to join. Link down below with all the details. Now that I've talked about 
about all the benefits of jailbreaking, you might be wondering to yourself, how do I sign up? All of these features seem pretty cool and it might be worth investing a bit of time to get it set up on my Kindle. How do I do it? And that right there is where jailbreaking starts to fall apart. In my opinion, the effort and risk involved with getting your Kindle jailbroken is simply not worth it. I do think there's some people who would really benefit from it, but for the average bookworm, I think it's more of a nuisance than a benefit. When it comes down to it, there are two things I want you to know when it comes to jailbreaking. I want you to understand how jailbreaking works, and I also want you to know the sacrifice involved when you do jailbreak. Let's first talk about the jailbreak itself. Now, I consider myself a pretty tech savvy person, but even for me, it took me a full hour to set this jailbreak up on my Kindle. Let me give you some context on how it all works. Now, the step-by-step -step tutorial on how to jailbreak your Kindle can be found on kindlemodding.org. It's very detailed, very straightforward, but there are a lot of steps. And on top of that, oftentimes the steps don't work as expected and you have to go through the other troubleshooting steps to fix those issues. In a nutshell, jailbreaking your Kindle actually involves doing several different things all at the same time in a certain sequence. The first step is actually installing the jailbreak itself. Now doing this step might not even work for you depending on the Kindle that you have and the software that you're running. You see, Amazon is always trying to patch these jailbreaks and prevent people from doing them. So if you're running the latest Kindle software right now, the jailbreak is simply not compatible with your Kindle. You have to be running a slightly older software or have an older Kindle. Once you do install the jailbreak though, there are several other steps after that. The next one is installing the app launcher called Qual. I'm not even sure if I'm saying that right, but this is a thing that actually lets you install apps and have those extra modifications. Once you install the app launcher, the next step is to disable the over the air updates that your Kindle automatically gets from Amazon because you don't want your jailbroken Kindle to be getting an update from Amazon that might completely brick your Kindle. And a quick note about that if you ever decide later on that you want to unjailbreak your Kindle and factory reset it, you have to remember to go back and undo this step, otherwise your Kindle won't get updates anymore. Once you do all of these steps, you can finally do the last step over here of installing the application or extension called CoReader, which gives you all these fun settings to play with when it comes to reading books. Now, each one of these steps and components I talked about involve downloading certain files, running commands on your Kindle, and following a sequence of events to get to this very point of being completely jailbroken. So it's not as straightforward or pressing a button. You have to go through several different steps. Now, if you decide it's all worth it for you and you go through with all these steps and you get to the very end, I do want you to also understand the sacrifices you're making when you have a jailbroken Kindle. The first and probably most scary sacrifice and risk that you're taking is a possibility of bricking your Kindle. Now, what I mean by that is you're messing around with the system files of your Kindle. If something goes wrong, even down the road, you may end up with a Kindle that's a paperweight. It's not going to work anymore it'll just completely shut off and just be unusable. Now, I don't think that's a very common thing that happens to most people. I haven't seen any reports of that anywhere, but it is a risk when you're doing stuff like this on your device. The other sacrifice that you're making is voiding any warranty that you have with Amazon, especially if you have a relatively newer Kindle that's not that old that might still be covered under warranty. If you jailbreak your Kindle, I highly doubt Amazon will want to support that device moving forward. Another massive sacrifice that you have to make when you jailbreak your Kindle if you want to use all those fun new reading features is you have to bring your own EPUBs to your device. One thing that I didn't realize is when I jailbroke my Kindle, all the books that I purchased on Amazon that are already on my Kindle were not compatible with the CoReader application. The CoReader app is not able to read those Amazon locked files that are already on your Kindle. You have to download your own EPUBs and transfer them onto the Kindle manually. This is a huge pain because as of right now, there's no easy way to download your Amazon books and get them in EPUB format. You have to find EPUBs elsewhere or find these sketchy ways of converting your books into EPUB. For me personally, that was a deal breaker by itself because I buy almost all my books right now from Amazon. So it's really hard for me to get them in EPUB format. The next sacrifice you're making is basically keeping your Kindle on airplane mode all of the time. You don't want to risk getting a software update from Amazon and bricking your Kindle or causing an issue with your jailbreak. So having your Kindle not on Wi-Fi anymore is pretty much an essential thing moving forward. And the last sacrifice that you're making and probably the biggest one in my eyes is the fact that jailbreaking your Kindle is probably the biggest distraction you can do for yourself to take you away from reading books. At the end of the day, I think jailbreaking your Kindle will be a benefit for a lot of people, but I also know for a fact it'll be a huge investment of time. And I really want you to reflect, do you really need all these extra fun features? Will they actually make a difference for your reading? If you want my take, I think jailbreaking could be a fun thing to do if you have an old Kindle lying around, but if you just have a newer Kindle or one that you use all the time when you buy books directly from Amazon, 
it certainly is not something you have to do. If you enjoyed this video and you are considering jailbreaking your Kindle, I want you to watch my other video that talks about Amazon's recent decision to stop allowing people to download books from their website. That will directly impact your ability to get books on your Kindle. Link for that on the screen right now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.